So you're thinking about moving to the Charleston, South Carolina area and are wondering if a Somerville or a Mount Pleasant is the best fit for you. My team and I work with a lot of people moving here from out of state and sometimes they've narrowed it down between Somerville and Mount Pleasant but now we're at the stage of trying to hone in on these two different suburbs and decide where is the best fit for them. So in this video we're going to specifically zero in on these two different areas and talk about the similarities and differences between them including their location, things to do, convenience, and affordability. Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm a realtor here in the Charleston and Somerville, South Carolina area. And my team and I love helping people every day, just like you, make their smooth move to Charleston. So whether you are buying or selling in nine days or 90 days, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or set up a Zoom appointment below. All the links you need are in the description and pinned in the comments, and we would love to help you with all of your real estate needs. First, let's talk about location. Somerville is located further inland. It's northwest of downtown Charleston. Mount Pleasant is more of a coastal area, and it's northeast of downtown Charleston. Mount Pleasant is just west of some of our beaches here, specifically Isle of Palms and Sullivan's Island. So if you want close beach proximity, then Mount Pleasant is going to win that side of the pros and cons list. Mount Pleasant has lots of water overall, the Wanda River, the Cooper River, Shem Creek, Copahe Sound, and lots of creeks. So if you're into boating, kayaking, fishing, or really any type of water activity, then Mount Pleasant is probably going to be a little bit better of an area for you because you just have an abundance of water activities that you don't have as much of further inland. On the flip side, Somerville being further inland means that it has a smaller risk of hurricane impact. If you want to learn more about the flood zones here, check out this video all about flood zones and flood insurance. All you need to know is that the X flood zone is the lowest flood zone that we have here in the Charleston area. And there are more homes in X flood zones further inland, like in Somerville, than there are in Mount Pleasant. Now, Mount Pleasant still has plenty of homes with X flood zones, which means it doesn't require flood insurance if you're getting a mortgage. Anything above an X flood zone does require flood insurance. But of course, being further inland does help decrease your risk some. Now, you're not totally immune. We know that hurricanes hit further inland and all kinds of places up and down the East Coast. But we know that a lot of times, one of the worst parts about hurricanes is all of the storm surge that comes with it and when the rivers and the ocean and the creeks all rise. So in Mount Pleasant being a more coastal area with a lot of water, you have more risk of that coastal water surge than you do further inland. As far as overall size goes, both are very large areas. Going from one end of Somerville to the other takes about 45 minutes. Going from one end of Mount Pleasant to the other takes about 30 minutes. I do believe currently that Mount Pleasant's population is bigger, but Somerville has been one of the fastest growing cities in all of South Carolina for the last 20 years. And Berkeley County is one of the top fastest growing counties in the country. So I think it's just a matter of time before Somerville overtakes Mount Pleasant as far as population. If you're wondering which location is closer to historic downtown Charleston, it actually really just depends on which part of each suburb you're in. So for example, if you're in the next in area of Somerville right off of I-26, it's only about 30 minutes to get to downtown Charleston. If you're further out in Somerville, it'll easily be 45 minutes or longer to get to downtown. In Mount Pleasant, if you're in the northern end, you could also be about 30 minutes to downtown. But if you're in the southern end, you might only be 10 to 15 minutes from downtown. So it really just depends which specific area of each suburb you're living in to determine how far you are from historic downtown Charleston. Something people always ask me about is the traffic. So let's go ahead and talk about traffic as our second point here. Ultimately, both areas have traffic. 
There's traffic all throughout Charleston. And as I talk about in other videos, if you're coming from a smaller city, then the traffic is going to feel pretty terrible around here. But if you're coming from a big traffic filled area like Atlanta, DC, New York, LA, Seattle, then it's really not going to feel too bad here. Now, if you live in Somerville, you're likely going to be on Interstate 26 quite often. And that does get really backed up at prime time rush hour. So in the mornings going from the Somerville area towards the downtown Mount Pleasant area gets very backed up as well as in the afternoons coming back home from those areas towards Somerville 26 West gets pretty congested, especially if there's an accident, of course, but just in general, the traffic is pretty heavy. So if you are going to be commuting for work, then it's something you really need to keep in mind and just know what you're getting into. So yes, a lot of people who live in Somerville do say that the traffic can be pretty bad, but they are doing some work right now to improve the infrastructure. For example, they're currently expanding some roads close to the historic district. There's a Bacon's Bridge bypass, as well as a cut through on North Maple that are currently being expanded. They also say that they're adding a couple of lights on Nexon Parkway to help with the traffic there. So those are definitely some improvements, but still it's not like it's just gonna solve everything and suddenly there's going to not be any traffic problems. When there's a lot of people in an area, there's just going to be traffic sometimes. Now Mount Pleasant also gets backed up at prime time. If you are coming home in the afternoons to Mount Pleasant, the Ravenel Bridge does get backed up as well as 17 overall. Of course, sometimes there's accidents. So again, it's just something you need to be prepared for. Depending where in Mount Pleasant you live, there could be alternative routes like smaller one lane roads, for example, Rifle Range Road or Mathis Ferry Road, but still those get backed up too because other people are trying to use the back roads. So again, no matter where you're living, you're just going to have to deal sometimes with traffic. I think the bigger question around traffic is more about your personal lifestyle. So what is important to you? Where are you working? Do you have to commute? Is it five days a week? Is it just once or twice a week? Are you traveling at the prime time traffic hours? A lot of our clients are retired, so they're not worried about the commute. They're okay living in Somerville because they're not traveling to downtown at 8 a.m. every day. They can work around it. They can leave after the peak rush hour or they can come home earlier in the day. They have flexibility to work with that, so they're just really not too concerned about it. But if you, on the other hand, are going to be commuting from Mount Pleasant to North Charleston or from Somerville to Daniel Island, wherever you're going, you just really need to keep that in mind and look at what the time is without traffic and then also check out Google Maps at prime time peak hours and see what the difference is then. Next, let's talk about convenience and accessibility and just overall the number of things to do in both Mount Pleasant and Somerville. Now we already talked about the beaches and water activities and Mount Pleasant does win out in that category. As far as shopping goes, both have a lot of big box stores like Target, Lowe's, Walmart, Kohl's, Somerville has a BJ's Warehouse and Mount Pleasant has a Costco. Mount Pleasant has Whole Foods and Trader Joe's, whereas Somerville has Earth Fair, which is a more local regional type of health food grocery store. Mount Pleasant overall does have more shopping. There's a lot of local boutiques, retail shops, furniture stores. Somerville has it as well, just on a smaller scale. So overall, a lot of people like to go to Mount Pleasant to do shopping, but for your day-to-day -day conveniences, you're still going to have a lot of options in Somerville. Next, let's talk about restaurants. Somerville does have some really great restaurants. If you go to historic downtown Somerville, there are definitely quite a few there that people love, as well as in Nexton Square, there are some of Charleston's most beloved restaurants that have opened up a second or third location there. So you still have some really good options. In my opinion, Mount Pleasant has the best restaurants overall outside of downtown Charleston. There are so many of them that are incredible. So again, you're just going to have more options in Mount Pleasant, but you can still get a great meal in Somerville. 
Both have a lot of parks and green spaces as well. Again, I think Mount Pleasant has a little bit more. So if you're catching the pattern here, you can see that Mount Pleasant overall is just going to have more of things, more restaurants, more shopping, more water activities. It's kind of like a Somerville, but on a bigger scale and more coastal. Somerville has that cozy rural charm we call it small but lively, whereas Mount Pleasant is just a much bigger scale of things. They both, however, are pretty comparable as far as events and festivals. Both feature a ton of different festivals throughout the year. There's always something going on in both areas. If you wanna hear more specifics about that, about this, go check out my other videos where I go into more detail Definitely watch the Somerville pros and cons video as well as the Mount Pleasant pros and cons video. I have a lot of videos on a playlist for Mount Pleasant, Mount Pleasant overview, a vlog tour, different new construction, and also have a Somerville playlist. So for more details on the both areas specifically, go watch those videos next. Now let's talk about affordability. If you are moving here, this is obviously a huge consideration to know what makes the most sense with your financial picture of where you can buy a home that meets your needs. First, I'll say that property taxes tend to be cheaper in Mount Pleasant, while Somerville has cheaper sales tax and overall utilities. When it comes to homes, Somerville is substantially more affordable than Mount Pleasant. You definitely get more for your money in Somerville. Mount Pleasant is the priciest suburb in the area outside of the islands and beaches. Basically, the homes in Mount Pleasant are about double what they cost in Somerville. So to give you some specific numbers, the year-to-date median price home in North Mount Pleasant is $770,000. That's actually a 10% increase year over year. So from 2022 to now almost ending the year of 2023, it's been a 10% increase in median sales price in North Mount Pleasant, which is huge, especially considering that the market has shifted in a lot of places around the country in 2023. But North Mount Pleasant is still growing and there are some very high-end homes. There's some new construction, not a ton, but there is some, and that is definitely bringing the median up because a lot of these homes are over a million dollars, some even over $2 million and more. So of course that's going to drive up the median price. Now, South Mount Pleasant is pretty much neck and neck. It used to be that South Mount Pleasant was a higher median just because it was closer to downtown. That started to shift over the last few years where they're pretty comparable now. So the median year to date price for a home in South Mount Pleasant is $780,000. So only a $10,000 difference. The homes in South Mount Pleasant have also appreciated year over year by 5.7%. So it's still pretty substantial for that much appreciation in one year, especially for 2023 overall, again, compared to what has happened in some parts of the rest of the country, but still it hasn't been quite as high as North Mount Pleasant. If you're wondering where the dividing line is between North and South Mount Pleasant, it's right at the Isle of Palms connector, which is the bridge that goes over to Isle of Palms. So everything south of that is South Mount Pleasant, Everything north of that is North Mount Pleasant. Now let's talk about the median prices in the Somerville area for 2023. On the Berkeley side, which is the large master plan communities, for example, Nexton and Cane Bay, the median price for 2023 for a home is $391,795. Now this is actually down 2% year over year, which we're gonna talk about more in just a second. On the Somerville Dorchester County side of things, so the historic district and Summers Corner, for example, the median price home in 2023 is $388,953. This is down 2.9% from 2022. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the appreciation differences in home values. 
If you look at the MLS here, which is very large and includes multiple different counties, in 2023, overall, if you take every sale, the market has appreciated 2.5%. That's a pretty normal year. So in real estate, COVID aside, but a lot of normal years in real estate, you can expect a 2 to 3% appreciation. When you look back historically, that's what it averages out to be. So 2.5% for 2023 is pretty normal as far as appreciation goes. So when you look at Mount Pleasant appreciating 6 to 10% and then Somerville actually going down 2 to 3%, it's certainly something to be mindful of when purchasing a home. Mount Pleasant is a very desirable area to live. Again, there is some really high-end luxury real estate there and overall the lifestyle is something that people seek. There is a handful of new construction, but overall it's pretty built out. There's not really much land left that is going to get developed. So that helps keep property values strong and stable and appreciating more because there's nowhere left to go. The homes that are there are what are there. They're not getting watered down with you know, thousands of more homes being built every year. So it's likely that Mount Pleasant is going to continue to have really strong appreciation in the years to come. Now in Somerville, there is a ton of new construction happening and will be for the foreseeable future. It's further west of Charleston and you can continue to go further west and spread out past that area. So there are still a ton of people moving to South Carolina and people have to go somewhere. So it seems very likely that in the next 10, 20 years, there's going to be a lot of development that continues out in that part of the greater Charleston area. So it's a little bit hard to say what's going to happen with property values in Somerville in the long term, just because there is so much growth and so much building out there especially if you're competing with new construction when you go to sell the home. So if you think you're going to be selling your home in five years or 10 years, then there's a good chance that you're going to be competing with the builders, which is what a lot of people who are currently trying to sell their homes in Somerville are experiencing. So the homes tend to sit longer on the market than some other parts of Charleston. And they really have to be super competitive on their pricing incentives that they're offering to potential buyers in order to compete with the builders who are offering amazing incentives and interest rates and prices. Now months of inventory in Somerville is still only about two months, meaning if no new homes came to market, it would only take two months for all of the current homes to sell. So it's not like the homes aren't selling or sitting for six months or a year. It can feel that way sometimes compared to what happened during the pandemic where everything was just selling in a couple of days like hotcakes. So things are stabilizing right now and there are still plenty of people who are moving to Somerville because it's so much more affordable. It just makes sense for a lot of people. Overall, I'm certainly not saying don't buy a home in Somerville. I don't think the appreciation is a deal breaker. It's just something to be mindful of so you know what to expect in the future when you go to sell your home, what you might be up against. But overall, it's probably fine. This was just a comparison between Somerville and Mount Pleasant. So when you're looking at the two strictly on appreciation, it does seem likely that Mount Pleasant will appreciate more, but you'll probably be just fine in Somerville too. That wraps up our Somerville versus Mount Pleasant comparison. I'd love to hear your comments below if you live in the area, what you think some of the differences are that I missed, or if you're moving into the area and you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and tap the bell for notifications so that you can be the first one to know about all things Charleston. I send out a weekly newsletter every Thursday called the Charleston Insider that has a ton of information about Charleston. It's upcoming events, local news, local business spotlights. So if you want to get on that free mailing list, the link is also in the description where you can just put in your name and email and then you'll start getting those emails every Thursday to your inbox so you can start to learn more about our local area.
Again, if my team and I can help you with your real estate needs, we would absolutely be honored to earn your business. Feel free to call, text, email, or set up a Zoom. All the information you need is below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.